Happy birthday, Kalki. Hey! <laughs> Gotta do his thing here. How does it feel seeing your naked father? <laughs> <laughs> She's an actor, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I need to clarify, he's just changing his shirt. Why'd you become, wow, that accentuates your breasts. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you like it, Corbin. Look at my nipples. <sighs> one, two, three. Happy birthday. No one did it with me. I'm sorry. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Cocky! Birthday. Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reaction Theater. I'm Corbin. Ashley. Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Juicy content. It's so juicy. And today is the 10th, and that meaning it's Cookie Cakelon's birthday. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Did you know her last name? Do you know, just look at the spelling of her last name there. Right there? Yes. It's Cakelon. Okay. Isn't yeah. that interesting? That's... Yeah. It's a cool name, Cookie Cakelon. This you know who she is, right? Well, I don't know. You do. I'm not sure. Yeah, you what do. What does her face look like? Look in between no, your father's no, nipples. No, 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 no. I'm talking about reference in terms of where you've seen her before, because yes. you have. I but, have, multiple uh, times. This, what we're reacting to right now, is a conversation between Koki Kaiklin and Anya Kashya. Oh, cool. Uh, interesting about this. Um, they were once husband and wife. Say what? This but is, then they weren't. This is post their divorce. Wow. Uh, and so, and this is just a conversation about acting and craft. And so are they, I'm assuming they've worked on stuff and... I don't know if, if, if they've worked on stuff since then. Yeah. But I know they're, uh, this interview is after and so they're, they're cool. amicable people. Sure. Uh, well, which which that, is great. That is great. Uh, my parents famously, famously in our family because it's our family. Uh, <laughs> Divorced when I was three, and they've been good friends ever since. I've never seen and my parents I, fight. My, my <clears throat> ex and I are friends too, so that's how it should be. Yep. But, uh, so this is a little conversation between them. I thought that would be really interesting. This, I'm really looking He's forward to this because phenomenal director. Fantastic director. Phenomenal actress. This should be a lot of fun to amazing. listen to. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, we, we started late. Like, yes, like, you're good with technical stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Take Cast. Today I have with me Anurag Kashyap, a filmmaker and Asian provocateur. <laughs> Joining him is Kalki Ketla, an actor, activist, and writer. Now, we've had acquaintances, friends, and even childhood friends on the show, but this is the very first time we've had former partners in the house, and I think this is going to be an invigorating session. <laughs> Anurag, why don't you pick the first question for Kalki? Why is it on tape? I don't know. I'm here to take you on a journey with two minds, unlike any other. It's like there's no set. limit to their creativity. Oh, I love it. They are the rule breakers. The norm makers. Are you curious to know how they think? So am I. Let's find out what makes them go beyond. This is cool. It's an interesting concept. Very I like interesting it. concept. I didn't do that. Oh god. Long live identity crisis. How do you balance the artist in you with the brand in you? The celebrity who pushes out fashion, products, and red carpets. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. You don't know? I, I don't think you're even aware of the brand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the other day I was thinking like I was walking from like uh, a friend's place in Marine Drive to NCPA and like on the way like Taxi driver was going, Kalki! Nimesh was with me, you know, he's a designer. He was like, You don't realize that you're famous. I'm like, No, I do. I'm like, I know people want selfies and all. And he's like, But they think that you like have a Mercedes and three cars and stuff, you know, like, not that I have a Swift and, you know, live in Mahada and stuff. So it's, it is a strange world, like, but you also have the same issue. Yeah. Right? You know, when I met you, you had rickshaw. Big short, right? Didn't have car. Hmm. Living in a rented house. Yeah. But how do you balance it? How do you balance it? It's like, as as you get more and more busy, I have to constantly remind myself to start back at the beginning. It's it's the same thing as buying more products. It's like, 
suddenly you, you, you feel like you need these other things which you don't need. And it's the same with, with doing ads and doing all this other work. You know, like even your today, your social media, your Instagram, and suddenly you're doing all these other things, and you're like, wait a minute, what about Riyaz rehearsal, warming up my voice, going back to like what I used to do? Why I'm acting, you know? Mm. So it's like just taking all of those things away, uh, switching off my phone. I started doing this a lot, and then just with a you know, with an empty slate, starting to work. When you, when you when you react as an artist, hmm. you also. Are you also aware of me as a brand and that we so reactive, not reactive? Oh yeah. So this I have become like careful about because I think I like I've always been very candid, right? I feel I've said what I think, uh, but I also realize that anything can be taken out of context yeah. uh, and put out there, right? So what I've started doing is letting my work speak for itself. Yeah. Like Smart. if I make something which comes from, you know, personal experience or something, then you're putting out a work which then people can take home, listen to or watch and then react to personally in their own way without the pressure of being right or being wrong. Again, of course, you have to think of it from a practical point of view. Yeah, there's money, there's, there's a house, there's family to look after, all of those things. But apart from that, I don't really, my my ambition is not to have three houses and two big cars and I have everything I need already mm. in terms right on, of material things, more than enough I have. Awesome. So now it's uh, it's about choosing and wanting to do things better and you not never understood the need for a which is hard. Me neither. No? Don't you feel, I want to ask you, how do you manage to not be mediocre? I have been mediocre so many times. But how do you manage to keep fighting it? Because as a director, I feel... You have to be so much in charge and at the same time you have to delegate trust to everyone. It comes with the job. Somewhere you have to just pick everyone up and push them to get the right people. And how do you do it for yourself? Me? Uh, I, uh, I wish I think Anil Kapoor could look into the mirror and say I'm the best. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I've stopped trying to evaluate myself whether I'm mediocre or good or better or best or very bad. Mm. That has helped me a lot. I just know this two things. I realized long time back we had a lot to say and we exhaust what we have to say on social network. Mm. So I have started to keep off social networks. <laughs> I have a lot to say within. Mm. And it somehow finds my way to work. I those chairs. Okay, now I can choose for him. Um, what on this? Anurag, you've gone through so much with so many of your films. Your first film, Punch, never released. Black Friday was stalled for years. I remember reading that you were heading to the premiere in a new suit when you got a call saying that the film had been stalled yet again. Wow. You said that you went back into the room and didn't come out for three whole months. But eventually, how did you learn, in the words of Carrie Fisher, to take your broken heart and make it into art? <laughs> I, I don't think I've gone any other way. <laughs> I just put everything into my film. Mm. I think all my angst, everything just finds its way into my work. Yeah. I've been like that, I think, <laughs> since I was born. <laughs> <Driving to the laughs> it's Only thing I learned from Panch and Black is yeah, to stop waiting. Censored. That whole thing of wanting to show to people that Which is terrible. you are a filmmaker I am and what I have to say, that need went away with March never releasing and Black Friday and forever being in the loop. Mm. I think now when I finish a film, I just deliver it and I start on my next. And I find fresh things to say. Yeah. But the problem comes is around release time when there are interviews and people ask you questions. Yeah. And then I prod you, and then broke you, and mm. broke you, and then you mm. say it again. And before the film comes out, you have a headline. My last interview uh, just now at Ify was, uh, they asked me, uh, so how did you manage after divorcing Anra? Like, how, how are you managing? Like, as a single <laughs> When it was years ago, right? Like, it's like, wow, what, what, a, what a strange, you know, what a crazy thing to think a person can live, like, after a divorce without, like, you know, Dying. Without dying. Yeah, or, or go, going into a hole in shame. <laughs> you know, all these people who ask this question, I think when 
talk about misogyny, they should begin by admitting they're misogynists. Yep. That's it. The question itself, yeah, like if you keep asking those the wrong questions, you're gonna keep perpetuating that. No, no, no. The question is always cat fight, me and Richa, because we did a film here. Cat fight. Such a like nineties question, you know? Like, come on guys, we're so over that now. Nobody has cat fights anymore. It takes time to grow up. Yeah. I think questions should come after the work comes out. Yeah, exactly. Then you can It makes more sense. Yeah. Next. I choose for you, untitled. Ooh! I have a surprise for you. What do you consider your biggest personal victory? Oh. <laughs> that I can live with myself. Oh. oh, what a great answer. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, we're born alone, we die alone. We better be comfortable with ourselves and who we are. So, no, you know, I'm not so personal, please. Yeah, but this is my biggest. I think all my life I've actually um, emotionally uh, been very uh, vulnerable and I've always seeked out um, support uh, in like, you know, a, a strong man <laughs> and, uh, or, or, some, or someone, but I, I tend to have this thing of attachment and it's very strong. And I think that the last few years for me has really been about finding that support in myself and not being dependent on one other person or two other people, you know, like, yes, using the support system around me, my friends, my family and, uh, you know, people who love me, but not putting all your, you know, all your energy. I think, I think that, that, that was something that I used to do a lot. So I think for me, um, that's something that has been wonderful. I actually enjoy coming back to my own space, coming back to my alone time every once in a while when things get too much, it's like really important for me and that that has been, yeah. It also shows in a lot of your poetry and your work and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's an artist. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Easy. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Anurag, Piyush Mishra has said that you're married to cinema. He said that Vishal Bharadwaj is an organized person, but you're a self-destructive person. Oh. Until you destroy yourself, you can't create something. Oh. Is this true and what does it mean? <laughs> oh. oh, great. What does Kalki have to say? <laughs> what do you say to that? Yeah. yeah! What can I say? No, I, I don't know if I can, I don't agree with him. You don't have to destroy yourself. I think that, what do you think, of course? Kalki. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, me and Piyush, we have had lots of discussions and arguments over things, and he, he actually believes it. Mm. But I don't think so. I, I think hear that conversation. everything I, I go through or like battle with, I put yeah. it in my movie. That, yeah. I, that I often do. My films that, change midway through shooting if I'm going through a life change. That, that's that's <laughs> very true. And ending of Devdi changed yeah. while we were shooting. Yeah. The script was not written as a happy ending. We come on. You have destroyed the film. Okay, I think we But then also, do you feel that you create that? It happens organically. I think it happens organically. I don't. You should watch it. In your own life, you feel like if you don't have drama, you create. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't create drama. But many a times, I I really feel that. Somehow I, I just, my way of dealing with things is put it in the movie. Like no smoking was my way of dealing with all the bands and censorship. I just put it all out there. I camouflage it, sometimes I don't camouflage it. Interesting. But uh, I don't think I destroy myself to create. Yes, I'm not an organized person. I don't think you destroy yourself to create, but I do. I try in chaos. No, I, no, I mean you're very, you're, you're sorted when you're on a film set. You yeah, know exactly absolutely. What you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's chaotic, and but you are able to like really like. Yeah, and manage chaos very well. Beautifully, and you have a great sense of spontaneity, and you just make things happen, even when they're going wrong. You can use it for the best of, of the scene and stuff. But I'm wondering if you. If this is something go through yeah. um, If that that sense of uh, belonging that you feel on a film set uh, when you come back to life or reality, mm. you still live in your head mm. and mm. how much like... I live a lot in my head. I'm more at home <laughs> on the film set, Absolutely. at the festivals, right. Right. in the movie world. 
Right, yeah. Once so it's jump into like the next project, I that mean. has become your reality. Yeah. And that, has, that often kind of clashes with my re- actual reality. That's the conflict that I get into a lot. But when I'm traveling for the festivals, I'm watching, going from movies to movies and somehow kind of that literally becomes my life safe place yeah mm. yeah no, i think when 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 Piyush or me or any of our of those who love you have like said statements like he destroys himself it's not that you want to destroy yourself but you live for that reality and for that world and so we feel like we're just characters in your film uh-huh. he probably directs like daniel and lewis acts <laughs> that's, that's, full that's, of that's, that's that's the job <laughs> 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 so, no, no. It's not like that. Uh, I think that's my way of surviving. Mm. My way of my yeah. way of dealing with things is. It's your. It's like how I need that aloneness with myself. Mm-hmm. That's your. Yeah, my way of surviving is that because when I'm dealing with things, I put somehow somehow find my way into it. But everything is going fine. I yeah. That's when I don't know what to do. <laughs> that's when I really don't know what to do. When everything is just according to the script. And like a lot of my friends, actually all of my friends, they tell me you should not be given budgets to make movies. <laughs> because when I am given budgets to make movies and I am given everything, don't do. I don't know what to do with it. When I am given nothing, then I actually create. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can relate. I can. Yeah. You want to tell me what to pick or should I pick? Pick. I am not telling you anything anymore. Yeah. I pick creativity. Creativity. What exactly is your creative process? Are you an instinctive actor or do you prefer to come well prepared? When do you find the time to write? They're not mutually exclusive they're, they're not. at all. Uh-huh. There's a lot more to your creativity than writing and acting. I know you as a... Yeah, she's a full-blown artist at every level. Charcoal artist. Mm. You do sketching. Yeah. Mm. You do, what do so many do more things. Talk about what juggling. part of her creativity is. <laughs> you do clowning. Yay, one skill. Huh. You do so many. I, I use a lot of those little few things on day B. Yeah. Yeah. Or Yeah. Yeah. I can't keep still for very long. I, yeah. I need to be doing something or the yeah. other. I remember doing Margarita in the store that you're constantly on a wheelchair and I had to carry you down and yeah. carry you out. Yeah. I prefer doing. But she preferred. Uh, I prefer doing that. Method, yeah. Method Thanks, Jason. Like it. Me to the loo. Carrying <laughs> me to the bed. I remember you refused to get up. You just pick me up. I can't walk. Such a good That's life. awesome. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so I like to prep, I love to get into it and research it. I think I'm a geek like that. I love reading books and, and finding yeah. out about the characters. I remember another preparation that you did, you used to do then. What? Which was like much more harder than Margarita with a straw. What? That Ye Jawani and Diwani dance. <laughs> <laughs> that you so just bad. could not get right. What was that moment? Okay. Yeah, some... some <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not you, my... You reacted to that song. We did, yeah. For sure. And then what was the second part of the question? What motivates you to write? How do you find time to write? I don't find time to write. I find it the most difficult. Unemployment. (laughs) How do you find time to write? But you're very articulate about things when you write poetry. There's no inspiration like the deadline. So what I do is I commit to something. Mm -hmm. Like last month there was a uh, spoken word festival in Bombay. So I committed to it. They advertised me, they put my name out, they said, I'm doing it. I oh, hadn't yeah. got anything you done. You better create something. Like 15 yeah. days before the show. And I was damn stressed. I was like, I can, ne- I can never write again. I have no talent. That's and all that was scary. Fun. And then it came at the last minute. It's like forcing the birth of a child, but you're not so pregnant. It's like, what I am I going to do? I'm a disciplined writer. I'm not a, I, I don't call myself a writer because I don't think I do it as a daily exercise but I do love it and I feel the only way for me to do it is to push myself put myself in a situation where I have to write you have to do turn do not play it's a great do not play <gasps> it is a great conversation do not play with my heart Anurag, have the two failed marriages led you to become a better man? <laughs> <laughs> simple, uh, yes. simple questions are the best I don't think I was a bad man. <laughs> well, I learned so much more. <laughs> marriage is a lot of commitment. It is. Yeah. And I think marriage is. Commitment. Yeah, just there. You have to make an effort to make it work. Yeah. Yes, oh, understatement. Yeah. Like, you know, two people come together and it works out. But yeah, it's a lot of work. It's also. She just wants to hear what you just said. Scary. Yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> I love her face. I have the two marriages, failed marriages, that helped you become better. Very person. revealing. I think I've become, yes, I've become more understanding, more tolerant, more. I take and give more space. I know that when you're dealing with a whole lot of things outside, you don't have to bring it home. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> She's like, amen, brother. I'm best lucky then. <laughs> <laughs> you did learn something, yeah. But everyone, I think, has to learn from every failed thing yeah. in life, yeah. Sort of no, you keep, yeah, definitely you'll learn from everything. You're here to learn and evolve. It is. That's what it's for, it's to learn. I have understood the importance of taking holidays mm. Mm -hmm. so much more. Mm. Um, so you look also uh, healthier and happier than yeah, yeah. I am. Before. <laughs> <laughs> the importance of exercising, the importance to stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So much mm. going on. Everything doesn't have to be cinema. They're all thinking of the exact mm. same thing. Everything is still cinema. That they're not talking about. Sleep with it in the bed anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm a better person. I'm a more livable person. I'm like, it's like. Yeah, I think you were always a great person. I think you have a heart of gold. But maybe like, yeah, it's, I don't know actually. I have my problems. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think, I, I, I know I have my problems. I was lazy. I was very lazy. I, I would come home and just sleep. And mm. I think outside of cinema, I didn't know how to do conversations, which I'm like getting better at probably. And lots I of... think you were quite talkative in hmm. the beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning, yeah, because I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question because. You have answered it, I think. Huh? Answered Very it. interesting. Okay. This is the end. Kanki Anurag, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. You're two people who stand to make a huge difference in the industry. Join us on another journey in the next episode to discover what it takes to fly beyond. Well, that was well, thank you. Thanks. In Indian, yes. <laughs> How does he know it was good? I don't know. I just tell you why I, I love that. And at first I was like, this is such a weird format, mm -hmm. but I actually love it. I do too. Because you couldn't fall back on the host to uh -huh. stop the silence. Right. It's exactly. just there. You have to figure yes. it out. Yeah. That's a, it's a great so, format for like, that. The, the interview can ask the questions he wanted to ask. Yeah. But you, like, you can't just be like, uh, and then they can't restate the question. To, yeah. To the it's like the going. actors talking about acting that they do where it's yeah. just the two of them. And so there's nobody else there to mediate. It's, it's a great format. Yeah. It's a really great format. And also uh, to see two people that were once husband and wife, you can see so much history going on just behind oh, yeah. their eyes. The oh, littlest yeah. looks that and, they give each other. And, and like, it's great oh, that they're, they're there. amicable and they're, they're, they're friends. Yeah. Uh, but you, there's history mm -hmm. and they both know that history and they're not talking about it, but you can see it. Yeah, you, yep, can. you can see it. For sure. <laughs> and it's wonderful. And they, I loved it. And it was, I thought the questions that were asked were really good questions. They Agreed. brought out and also mm -hmm. since he wasn't there, they had to expound on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Normally they'll just fall on the, like, give a little answer and then the interview will try to get a little more out of them. Yeah, since, restate the question a little bit, give them a little something to work with. Being in front of the camera, you feel, and there's no host, mm -hmm. you feel a need to fill the space yeah. with noise. <laughs> so it's not just... That's, I think, a, an interview tactic is they'll yeah. just, they'll ask a question and then the person will answer and then they'll just sit there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they'll make them... It is. And the thing you have with this in regard to there being no host and them having a history and relationship is I could feel that they both at times forgot that what they were doing was being filmed and was a show. And they're like, oh yeah, we should yeah. say. Which is the point. That, yeah. Yeah. And you could tell that she's a lot more comfortable in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I think, uh -huh. um, but that's pretty common with directors. It, it, they both kind of typify the actor-director persona in terms of the fact that the director's uh, he seems to be the kind of guy who's, who's very much self-aware, but doesn't take that self-awareness into something that he would share with you yep. mm -hmm. comfortably and, and is even not too sure he wants to know things about himself. Right. And admits it yep. versus an actor. He just likes to stay in his little world. Exactly. And he's like, you know, yeah. there's things about me that I don't know that I want to know. Yep. Uh, I know they're not hey, right. And I hope question. they, <laughs> and I hope they get fixed and I hope I'm getting better. Whereas the actor is, is like, like 
rip me apart. Here it all is. <laughs> Even the way they looked at each other, he had a lot of things that I could see some... He doesn't have a lot of walls with her, but he's got some walls that she doesn't have. Yeah. Uh, and I don't fault him for it in any way. There it's yeah. just their personalities. Yeah. It's who they are. And I could I could relate to both of them. Oh yeah. Big time. Oh yeah. Because uh, I'm I'm an actor, but I'm not I'm not as open as these two. Yeah. <laughs> you would be very <laughs> much. True. A, you'd be very so much a blend. I love directing as yeah. well. That's like my first love is acting, but I would totally go into directing because mm -hmm. I like being in charge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what a what? shock! I know that's weird. But it's uh, it's uh, I I thought it was a really interesting conversation, and also just flat out asking, do you think you're two failed marriages? <laughs> <laughs> I love I love both of their reactions. I know, to she's that. like, please answer that question. He's yeah, like, she, oh, I don't. she just <laughs> sat there and was like, what are you gonna Let say? Let that stew, my friend. I'm what are you ready gonna to say? Hear it. it was great. But and, uh, she, both of them, obviously, we've <clears throat> seen their work and see their personalities are people that you'd want to work with, first mm -hmm. of all. And then Look. she she never ceases. She always continues to be who I think she is and impress me. Mm -hmm. And she's just the quintessential artist. I bet her work ethic is off the freaking charts when you work with her. I bet she's a joy to work with. I, I, bet, I bet she doesn't tolerate laziness. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, I think... I, think both, I, would, I would love to sit down and talk and work with both of them. Yeah, are you uh, kidding? The, <laughs> big time. Yeah. Uh, just just talk about cinema, talk about artistry, and <laughs> it was everything. It was it was a weird question when he asked, um, "Are you a very prepared person?" Like, or what's your you, creative process? What's your creative process? Also, those, like, those, well, those can go hand in hand. Yeah. Robert Williams can be the most prepared person in the world, but he can also be the most spontaneous person yeah, in the world. Yeah, just. It depends Throw on what you're working on and when, when you're working on. You know why you can be so spontaneous? Spontan spontaneous. spontaneous. spontaneous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because of how prepared you are. Yeah. And you know where the scene's going. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that was one of the most. That was one of the best, most profound things I've ever heard you say. It's so, so what true. What I believe. <laughs> it, well, it's, it's. He's like, I know, I'm a profound person. <laughs> yeah. You're, it's the truth about. It's the truth about being able to be in a scene and improv in the scene, mm -hmm. yeah, that improvisation isn't gonna have its fluidity and its freedom until you know your stuff first. Oh yeah, you gotta know your stuff because it's you have the to, preparation. You have to get, in order for that, you can't just improv to improv and it doesn't work for the scene. Uh -uh. Your improv has to work for where the scene is going and yep. you gotta know the scene. You have to yeah. know your stuff, you yep. have to know his stuff, yep. you gotta know everybody's well said, stuff. It's not mutually exclusive. No. <laughs> so I don't By really anyways. like that part, but I enjoyed the, if there's more interviews like this, this is how I want interviews to be. Yeah. Uh, Agreed, and I understand for people who aren't um, actors or creatives in that regard, they want to know what is this thing? It mm -hmm. would be like me talking, and I have felt this way sincerely, when I see somebody who masters, like, building a car. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Somebody who's, who just, who can do really well and loves doing uh, math, you know? Oh. Uh, I, I, Weird. I, <laughs> no, I sincerely, when I watch people do that, like, even watching someone do repairs on something as simple as if there's a plumbing mistake, Watching a wait, that's not your area. Uh, that's yeah, no. You just watch plumbing. You don't know how to build cars. I, I, they, they, for them, it's like they blow it off. I was like, well, I just studied it, and anybody can do it. I'm like, no, not not anybody can do it, my friend. Yeah. Uh, so people who ask those questions, I understand when they're like, what's your creative process? Mm -hmm. They they genuinely, genuinely want, want to know, know. <laughs> like, what's going on, and yeah. how do you do this? Right. Yeah. But yeah, that was great. Love that. Great, love this. Happy birthday, Kalki. Yes. Uh, you look beautiful. Yeah. And you're such a talented, talented artist. <laughs> I can't wait to watch more of what you and, and we're going to get into him in a big way. Trust come me. On. Because I'm so excited. Yep. <laughs>